Welcome. This video is designed to guide you through an introduction to Adobe Illustrator, the first program that we will be using in Digital Art One. To open Illustrator, you're going to want to search for the word Illustrator in the search bar at the bottom of your screen and open the latest version of Adobe Illustrator. Once it loads, you may be prompted to sign in. If prompted to sign in, you should sign in using your Google address with your FCPS schools.net credentials. Once you are logged into Illustrator, this will be your home screen. You can see that we have the Creative Cloud files down here, and on the left we have the option to either create a new file or open. We will almost always start by creating a new file, so you want to start by clicking on the blue button, Create New File. This takes us to our new document setup. First things first, you want to make sure we're working with a preset on a letter size piece of paper. This way when students print their artwork, it will come out on the standard size paper that goes into the printer. So click print at the top, then click letter. Next, we wanna make sure our point of measurement is set in something familiar. So we'll click on this drop down menu over here and switch it to inches. We can toggle our orientation for portrait on the left or landscape on the right here. And as you can see, the width and height are automatically adjusted for portrait or landscape. Finally, students should always name their work with their last name and then the title of the assignment. Assignment titles can be found on either Schoology or they are usually projected in the classroom during class. For today, this is just an intro to Illustrator, so I'm going to title it my last name, Lucas, an intro to Illustrator. Once you have set your file size, your point of measurement and your orientation, and then named your file, press create. This is where we will be doing our work. The gray area before you is called your work area. The white digital piece of paper in front of you is called your artboard. At the top left corner, you can locate all the menus. When the teacher says file menu, you should look up here. On the left side, you'll see your toolbar. If the teacher says select the selection tool, you can look for it here. And then on the right, we have our properties. If your teacher tells you to adjust the property characters, you should check here. If your screen does not match mine and instead looks like this, you'll want to click on the workspace setup. Toward the top of the screen, right next to the minimize button, you'll see a little button that says switch workspace. Click here and make sure Essentials Classic is selected. This will give you a larger toolbar with more options that is easier to see and it also allows us to see more of our properties on the right. Illustrator works by using vectors and vectors are just a fancy word for shapes. We can place vectors on the artboard in three different ways. First, we can use the preset shapes here under the various shape tools. If you click and hold on the rectangle tool here on the toolbar, you'll see the rectangle tool, the rounded rectangle tool, the ellipse tool, the polygon tool, and the star tool. For more information on how to use these tools, see the basic shapes tutorial. For now, I'm gonna select the rectangle tool and use it to place a rectangle on my artboard. Here at the bottom of my toolbar, you'll see my fill and my stroke. Right now, the fill, the interior color of the rectangle is set to white and the stroke, the outline color of the rectangle is set to black. Generally, when we are working in Illustrator, we want to have no stroke so that we can overlap our vectors. 
To set the stroke to none, you're going to click on the small button beneath it that is a white box with a red line through it. The stroke icon here will change to be white with red through it, and we have our stroke set to none. To change the color of the fill, select the fill on the toolbar, then double click on it to open the color picker. In the color picker, we can select whichever hue we would like, and then we can adjust that hue by picking either the full saturated version, move to the left to add white and select a tint, move down to add black and select a shade, or move diagonally to add gray and select a tone. I'm gonna go with a tint. Generally, we cannot change the background of the artboard. So if a student wants to have a background behind their artwork, they should place a gigantic rectangle and stretch it to be the size of the artboard. You can change the size or move a vector using the selection tool, which is the black arrow here on the toolbar. The selection tool allows you to stretch something vertically stretch something horizontally, stretch something diagonally, and even rotate. When stretching diagonally, if we hold down the shift button on the keyboard, we can always stretch something proportionally. When students are adjusting the sizes of their artwork, they should always hold down shift so that they do not accidentally stretch out their piece. Next, let's talk about layers. Your layers palette looks like this. And if you don't see it right away, you can access it along with all the other palettes by going to the window menu and selecting layers. Layering vectors together is what allows us to make artwork in Illustrator. If I click create new layer, that will add a layer on top of whichever layer I have placed here. So on this new layer, let's say I want to make clouds. I can use the ellipse tool and select a color. We'll do gray clouds of gray. And I can press and layer together several different ellipses to create a cloud. Another way I can create a cloud is by drawing my own vector. There are two tools that allow you to draw your own vector. The pencil tool, which lets you freehand draw your vectors using the mouse or a drawing tablet. We'll fill it in with gray. Or I can use the pen tool, which works by clicking your mouse and the computer will connect the dots for you. If students have a hard time drawing freehand, especially with a mouse, this can be a great option for them. Whenever we draw our own vectors, we always want to make our last click or end the vector where we started to complete the shape. When vectors are not completed and someone tries to complete them by filling them in, the computer will simply connect the dots with a straight line. Sometimes this works to the student's favor, and sometimes it doesn't. So whenever we make a vector, it is wise to either make it using a combination of the different shape tool options, the pencil tool, or the pen tool. I suggest that every time a student adds something new to their artboard, they create a new layer. Here we'll put a sun in the sky. Again, I'm going to use the ellipse tool. We'll make our sun yellow. I'll place the sun right here. By using my selection tool, I can move the sun around wherever I want. However, because it's on layer three, which is on top of both layers two and one here, 
it will always be on top of my sky background and on top of the clouds. If I click and drag layer three to be underneath layer two and have this blue line separating the layers, that will move my sun so that I can hide the sun behind the clouds. And because the clouds are all on the same layer, I'm able to hide the sun behind any one of them. Layers can also be deleted. If you want to delete a layer, simply click on the layer and then press the trash can at the bottom of the layer palette. If you ever make a move in Illustrator that you wish you hadn't done, we can always undo. Go to the edit menu and then click undo and then it will tell you whatever action it is undoing. In this case, it was me deleting the layer. If you want a quicker way, you can also hit Control Z on your keyboard. Last, let's talk about saving our work. When students are done with their work for the day, they have the option of saving their work in two different ways. Both are accessed the same way. Start by clicking the file menu and go down to save as, not save or save as a copy. We always want save as. From this prompt, we will always save onto our computer. Students are not able to turn in their work if they only save it to the Creative Cloud. This is the menu that will pop up. We always advise that students save their work to their Google Drive. This can be accessed by typing in drive in the search bar at the bottom of their screen and connecting their drive to be a folder on their computer. If not, I recommend saving it in a safe location such as documents. Please keep in mind that the top options, the desktop downloads, documents, and pictures are tethered to the computer the student sits at. If they save their work here and the computer is re-imaged, then they will lose their work. Students should always back up their work by saving it to their Google Drive. If students title their work at the beginning, that title will repeat here. You can see it says Lucas Intro to Illustrator AI. AI files or Adobe Illustrator files are the file type that we use when we are pressing pause on a project. If students are planning on coming in the next class and working on it or would like to continue working on their project for a better grade after receiving feedback, they should always have an AI copy saved. Simply make sure that you have your title correct, that the save as type is set to Adobe Illustrator and hit save. When this message pops up, we just say okay. If a student is saving their work to turn it in on Schoology, Schoology cannot read AI files, so we have to save our work differently to be a file type that Schoology will recognize. Once again, we'll go to the file menu, select save as, and then save on your computer. This time, we're going to change our save as type by clicking the drop down menu and selecting Adobe PDF. This PDF file is ultimately what students will turn in on Schoology. If students come in and are resuming their work on a previous project, they should start by hitting open or going to file open. From here, they can access their, AI, their other AI files, which will look like this. Using these basic tools and more, students will create incredible works of art that will slowly build on their previous skills until ultimately they are able to make a vector graphic as you see here. If you have more questions on how to use Adobe Illustrator, you can always check the Adobe website for their support videos or ask your teacher.